And while you're doing that, I'll, I'll give a brief introduction that uh, uh, Ms. Frizzell Hampton is from, is the Virginia Caption Telephone Outreach Coordinator for the Commonwealth. Um, and uh, is, is part of that service that provides the, the 711 services. And, and for those who haven't experienced uh, 711, um, you know, in a 911 center, it is possible for us to get a get a call from the relay center um, that uh, relay services that uh, uh, if a hearing impaired or a speech impaired person calls them and asks for um, you know a emergency call to go through, they may contact the the, the peace app directly or 911 center directly. Um, and it's also a resource for the 911 center that might need to contact someone in the hearing impaired community through a, a relay service. Now, 911 does need to be directly accessible for somebody who dials 911 directly, um, but in those cases where they either choose not to or or um, uh, are unable to for some reason, um, you know, the, the relay service is, a, is an available service to you know, all citizens of the Commonwealth. Yes, that is correct. Um, 711 basically is the way um, for people. And like you said, my name is Frizzell, and I'm with a company called Hamilton Relay. And Hamilton Relay is the relay provider, um, both traditional, which is 711, and uh, caption telephone here um, in Virginia. Uh, with 711 Relay Service, basically a person would dial the 711 um, number and be connected to the operator. Um, whether the person is deaf, hard of hearing, um, deaf blind, has difficulty with speaking, and make it known what number they would like to call or contact. And then from there, the operator would connect the call and then be the person who's kind of mediator or the go-between between between the person who is utilizing the relay service and then the person who's either called the relay service or if the person who needs the relay service has called them, they would be the person who would um, be speaking and talking with them. I do want to start first talking about – the caption telephone or cap is what we call it for short. Um, basically, with the cap telephone, there is an operator that is there, but the operator is only there for the sole purpose of revoicing exactly um, what the caller is saying. So uh, what the traditional relay call, 711, where you can hear the operator with the caption telephone call, you cannot hear what the operator is saying. You only can see the words that the operator is saying to the person who's using the uh, telephone. So basically, uh, Virginia Relay is provided by Hamilton, like I said. Um, We do have a contract with the Department for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing, and Hamilton Relay is part of a division of Hamilton Telecommunications that is based out of Aurora, Nebraska. Um, We've been doing relay services since the ADA law was passed in 1991. We've been part of Relay for the entire 26 years that Relay has been, uh, that was mandated when they passed the ADA law. Now, I don't know, um, and if you can stop me, if you have any questions, I don't know whether you want to wait to the end for questions or if you have a question um, while I'm presenting, I'm okay with you stopping and asking the question, or do you prefer that questions be held until the end after I'm done with my presentation? Usually we let people interrupt if they have a burning question, but then we always give an opportunity at the end as well. Okay, super. Then I'm open to either way. <laughs> so basically, what is a caption telephone? So a caption phone, like I said, it will allow people um, who have difficulty with hearing over the phone to listen um, while reading what the captions are saying. So if you look at the uh, individual here that is using the phone, he can see what the caller is saying to him. Um, this is a free public service. Relay service, whether you're using traditional 711 or any sort of caption phone, is provided free by the federal government. And, and I always tell people really quickly when they ask what is a caption phone, I kind of say it's the same way as if you were to cut the captions on your TV and read the captions that come across the screen when you're watching your favorite television program. The caption phone functions the same way and in that the person can see what's been said to them when they're having a conversation. That goes whether they're making an outgoing call or a call is coming in. So some of the benefits quickly about um, the caption phone, 
um, you can understand what's being said on every call. So if a person is moderately deaf, profoundly deaf, um, hard of hearing, if they're deaf blind, they can see what's being said to them and then they can respond based upon what they see coming across um, their telephone screen. And with all relay calls, whether it's a caption phone uh, call or a relay call, um, it will allow the person to maintain independence. A lot of people sometimes will not make phone calls because they feel like they have to rely on a neighbor or a loved one and they don't want to feel like a burden. With caption phone and relay services as a whole, it will allow a person to maintain their increased independence. So I'm not going to um, show the video. I'm just going to talk about basically how um, how the caption phone works. So the gentleman over here on the left, he's a caption telephone user. The lady in the middle is the captioning service, and the person who's the other party is the person who's making a call to the caption telephone user. So basically what happens is, is at the same time that the caption telephone user is calling the other party, his phone call is also being connected to the captioning service. Um, like 711. So with that, when that happens, basically when he calls out, he's basically in line with calling the captioning service as well as the other party. It's calling the captioning service for the sole purpose of being able to be connected so that the caller who's using the caption phone can see what's being said to him, whereas the person who's the other party can just hear the captioning caller's voice and they can have a normal conversation. And so then at the same time, if the person who was the other party was calling to the captioning or the caption telephone user, the same thing would happen. When they dialed that person's telephone. When, hello? When they dial the person, okay, okay. When they dial the captioning telephone user's phone number, they're going to also be connected at the same time to the captioning service so that with the incoming call, the caption telephone user can see what's being said to him. Um, some of the features, um, looking at the phone, um, it a, has a large screen. It comes in different font sizes. Um, it is an amplified phone. It also has a built-in answer machine. Um, it does have caller ID capabilities. So if a person has caller ID with their um, telephone provided, and it would also be supported on the caption phone. They can save and review all their prior phone calls, um, which is really helpful. A lot of times if people are talking to their doctor and maybe forget their appointment time or uh, prescription, they can always go back and review um, basically um, whatever the conversation they had with the previous caller or the previous callers. And then we do also have customer care. It's a 24 hours seven-day-a-week service that's available for anybody who maybe has some issues with their caption phone, maybe has some questions about how a certain feature works, they're there. Um, if you are unable to get me to be able to answer any questions you may have about your um, caption telephone. So we have different models of caption phones. In Virginia, um, we're really fortunate that we um, – actually have about four different models. We have the basic 840, and this is for anybody who has what we call analog service. So you don't have digital service. Maybe you don't have um, Fios or you don't have um, Internet, but you just have what we call uh, plain old standard telephone service. You can still use the caption telephone. Um, basically, you just need to be able to have a phone jack and a power um, source that we can plug the phone into so that you can the screen will light up and you'd be able to see your captions. Another phone that Virginia also offers is not on the screen is what we call the 840 Plus. The 840 Plus looks just like the 840, but it has the option to be converted from an analog phone to a digital phone. So if a person decides they get Internet in their home and they want to still be able to utilize their um, caption telephone, we can come out and we can convert the phone from an analog phone to a digital phone, but that's only with the 840, um, for the 840 plus. With the 840i, basically it is, it's an internet based phone, which is why it has the i behind it. Um, you can have either analog or digital telephone service, but you do have to have, um, high speed internet. Um, it can be either the wired or wifi connection. And then the same, um, thing with the power source is also needed as well. 
Um, the 840i and the 840 look the same. The only difference is that on the back of the 840i, there is a port where we can connect the Ethernet port for it to be a wired Internet service. The 2400i um, is one of our really popular phones. It's, um, it's touch screen. We typically like to give this phone to people who are pretty tech savvy. They have a computer. They have a smartphone that's touch screen. Um, we will, you know, reserve these phones for those particular individuals. It does have a speaker on it, and it also has Bluetooth, which is really good because a lot of people now with hearing aids have the Bluetooth uh, capability or they have streaming loops they wear on their neck that are Bluetooth wired that we can connect and it will go straight to the person's hearing aid. And whenever the phone rings, they just hit the speaker button and they can answer it through their hearing aid and still be able to see what's being said over the screen. As far as what's needed, it's the same requirements. Um, you have to have phone service, you have to have internet, and you have to have a power source in your home for it to be able to work. In Virginia, we have a couple of different programs that will allow you to get these telephones. They have what's called the Equipment Distribution Program, or in Virginia they call it Technology Assistance Program. Now, this program applies to caption phone as well as people who use traditional 711. Some people need TTY. So if you um, need any type of an equipment, you can go through the TAP program. The number is here on the screen that you can call to find out more information about, as well as you can go to the website that you see here, um, vdbhh.org uh, backslash TAP about, and you can find out the qualifications that are needed, what equipment you can get through the TAP program um, if you want to go through uh, Virginia to get the TAP um, equipment. Now, if you decide that you um, do not want to go through the TAP program, you can also still go through Hamilton's program that we offer where you can get the 840i at no cost, and sometimes you can also get the 2400i at no cost as well to you. We would just have to have something from your doctor that certifies that you do have some sort of hearing loss, um, and then they will ship the phone directly to you. Now, if you do not, for some particular reason, have Internet, but you need the 840, you can directly purchase that phone for $75. Now, keep in mind, with the Equipment Distribution Program, you can get either model, Internet model, non-Internet model, through the state's program, and the program basically um, will give it to you, like I said, either little or no cost to you. The program is really generous. They just look at basically who lives in your home and what the monthly income is, and from there, they will determine whether you meet the qualifications to be able to get the equipment at no cost or if you have to pay. And if you do have to pay, you would pay it what the state uh, purchases the equipment for. Does anybody have any questions right now so far? Okay. Um, another program that we have that's really um, special, and especially in Virginia since we are a heavy military state, is a program called Heroes with Hearing Loss, and basically it's a support program that offers assistance and um, kind of support, moral support, um, to veterans that have lost their hearing. Um, this is the number one service-related injury affecting veterans is hearing loss, um, you know, whether it was from combat or just, you know, age setting in. We offer this platform to allow them to be able to get along their other brothers and sisters who are veterans and kind of, you know, talk about you know, the hearing loss that they have, whether they lost it, like I say, via combat or they just lost it as time has gone on, we do offer um, the support system. To find out more about the program, you can always either give myself an email or you can go to the website here, um, heroeswithhearingloss.org. They have really good videos that you can kind of look at and hear some of the veteran stories. And that could be something that we can always do later. This is a whole other presentation in and of itself that we target directly towards veteran population, and it's a really good program. We do also have additional um, capsule options. We have options for your laptop. We have options for your smartphone. We have options for your tablet, and we also have options for um, business environments. Currently, right now, if a person is in a business environment and they need to get a capsule phone, we can bring one to them. We can help them set it up. Um, it's a little bit of a, um, a couple of things we have to kind of go around, but we can make it work. But we have recently launched our uh, CapTel for Business phone that I'll talk about in a few slides um, back. 
So some of the benefits of having uh, the CapTel for your PC or your Mac, you don't have to have a CapTel phone. You don't have to download any software. Um, you just need to have your computer or your laptop or your smartphone, and then you would have to have an actual um, CapTel account. Um, currently, right now, our website is under construction, so it's not really available for you to be able to go and look at it and see. But if you have any further questions, you're more than welcome to email me or give me a call, and I can definitely step you through it, talk talk to you about it, and um, even show you a small demonstration as to how it works. Um, the same thing when it comes to the smartphone. Um, you know, it works with any phone, whether you have an iPhone or whether you have an Android. Um, you have a voice and a data plan. You have to have both. Um, and, of course, you can still see. So it gives you the function of being able to see like on a regular uh, house cap telephone, you can see the captions on your smartphone or your tablet or, or your computer. Same thing with the tablet. Um, and then this is what I was talking about in regards to the Hamilton cap for business. Um, it does require that you have the Cisco business phone system, and I believe the state of Commonwealth of Virginia does have that. So if there's anyone you know that is a um, state employee that maybe would benefit from having this particular phone, um, Definitely send me an email, and I can connect you with the person who can talk to you more about what it requires for you to be able to get the phone. There are certain things, certain licenses that you have to do. You have to purchase this phone. Um, but we can definitely get the phone set up for anyone who needs it um, in the business environment. It's really good because with most basic CapTel phones, it doesn't have a lot of functions. It's basically you pick it up, you answer it. With this phone, you can receive calls from a PBX. You can transfer calls to a different extension. You know, you can have conference calls. So it's really, really um, a good phone that people who are, you know, in the workplace can use it so they won't feel hindered or limited, whereas with a regular caption or a regular cap cell phone, um, some of the functions that the business cap cell phone does, it won't work on a regular cap cell phone. So this is my um, name, and I'm going to give you my cell phone number, too. I, this is a busy time of the year for me. I'm doing a lot of traveling. So if you have any questions, feel free to give me a e uh, email me. That's my email address there. And the 726-6615 is my office number. You can also contact my cell phone number. It's area code 804-869-7419. Um, and um, this concludes the CapTel portion of the presentation. I'm going to go now and actually pull up the um, Virginia Relay website. And if anybody has any questions, we can definitely, um, while I'm doing that, we can, um, I can answer those questions for you. Any questions from anyone at this point? So now I'm going to get into the – well, hopefully I'll be able to pull it up. Okay. So here's the Virginia Relay website. And Virginia Relay, like I said, basically it will enable people who are deaf, hard of hearing, deaf, blind, or have difficulty – speaking to be able to communicate um, via TTY or text telephone and other assistive telephone devices with anyone who uses a standard telephone. So this is basically a Virginia Relay website. Um, it, it will connect you to the VDDHH uh, website. It also talks, like we said, about the caption telephone, and it talks about basically the, the relay service being a free public service for people who, as I said, are either deaf, hard of hearing, or deafblind and that anyone can make a relay call by just dialing 711. So if you needed to call somebody who you know uses relay, you would call them using 711, or vice versa, they would call you via 711. Um, like I said, the biggest difference with the caption phone and with using traditional relay 711 is that on a 711 call, you can actually hear the operator. The operator is present in the call, and they're kind of the in-between um, mediator, basically, that's voicing for the person who either has difficulty with speaking so that the person who's either calling or receiving the call can understand or relay or, under, you know, have participate in the conversation. <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. Most people who um, 
do use Virginia Relay, do use what we call a teletype machine or a TTY. Um, it looks like a little um, typewriter. It has a small screen in it where they can read the words, and then they reply back um, basically using the, the TTY machine. Some people will use uh, an interpreter, and they'll use what's called a video relay service. With the video relay service, it's still 711. Um, the only difference is that the person who's using relay can see the operator. They can see the operator, and the operator is interpreting for the person who's deaf, and then their voice is to the person who's either receiving or making the phone call to the person using the relay service. And we call those people communications assistants, or CAs for short. So if I go between CA or um, communications or captions assistant, it's basically the same it's the same person. Um, in addition to um, relay service, we also have a line called speech to speech. So for speech to speech users, those people typically maybe do not have hearing loss, maybe they've had a stroke, or maybe they stutter, or maybe they use an artificial larynx that will, um, something that is um, hindering them from being able to speak on their own or speak clearly. Um, they also will use the relay service, too. So it may not be that the person is deaf or hard of hearing. The person may be a person who stutters severely, or the person may have had a stroke, and the stroke has affected how they're able to communicate. Um, so um, I always let people know a lot of times it may be that the person using the service may not be necessarily deaf. It may be just, you know, they just can't speak well. And a lot of times with the relay service, when you receive these calls, the operator will let you know this is a relay assisted call. They'll give you their operator number, and then they will go ahead and they'll start, um, they'll proceed with with the phone call. With the speech-to-speech -speech call, sometimes the person who's using the speech-to-speech -speech service will feel comfortable speaking for themselves, and the operator will kind of step back, allow that person to speak for themselves um, in the event that maybe um, the person who's receiving the call or making the call cannot clearly understand what that person is saying, um, then the operator will step in and they will try to assist them um, in helping kind of navigate and move the phone call along. It's all based upon the relay uh, user's preference. We ask usually that most relay uh, users set up what we call a profile. With the profile, it will let, um, when they call into the relay center, they will know I would prefer if I'm a male to have a male um, relay uh, operator or if I'm a female, I would like to have a female relay operator. You know, um, I want to try and speak first for myself before you um, intervene and speak on my behalf. So all those things are in their profile so that whenever they call into the relay center, they'll know, okay, you know, John Doe wants a male uh, captioning assistant or CA, and so we'll – try to find a male one for him so that, you know, when they're speaking, they'll know um, it's a male. And I give that story because when I first started uh, working for the company, I had never received a relay call before. And my um, my boss at the time, um, he he's deaf. And so when the call came through, it was a woman, and she said her name was John. And so I immediately thought that it was a scam because I don't know any women, you know, named John. And so um, I always use that example so that people can know sometimes the importance of setting up a profile um, so that people won't think, you know, that this is a, you know, a scam call, you know, or, or you know, something that's not, you know, legitimate. Because um, that does happen a whole lot. And a lot of businesses who are not familiar or are used to taking relay calls will hang up on the call. So we will go out to businesses and we do training and we um, tell them what to look for, what to listen for, so that they'll know that when these calls come in, it is a legitimate relay phone call. You know, people sometimes will still try to use the relay service and make fraudulent phone calls, but they they should know exactly what to look for to confirm that it is an actual um, legitimate relay call. Any questions so far? Okay, so I want to talk about the TAP program. I spoke about it a little bit earlier briefly, but I want to go ahead and talk about um, and kind of jump over to the TAP program. Um, like I said, basically, telecommunications equipment for qualified low-income residents of Virginia, including veterans. Now, um, one thing about the veteran population in Virginia 
anyone who's a veteran who's been discharged honorably will automatically qualify to get the devices at no cost to them. So um, basically, as long as we can see a copy of your DD-214 and it shows that you were discharged um, in an honorable status, then you will qualify for the device. Now, it doesn't matter whether you lost your hearing from combat service or you lost your hearing because, like I said, life just sets in and, you know, sometimes people's hearing tends to decrease as they get older. You will automatically qualify and be able to get that um, those devices at um, no cost to them. And here's the website here for the Virginia Department for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. If you want to find out more information about what the agency does, um, you know, and, of course, it will also link you back here to the Virginia Relay uh, website as well. Does anybody have any questions so far? Okay. Um, in addition to the TTY um, that I spoke about, we also, in Virginia Relay, offer other, um, other assistive technology. We offer amplified telephones. They offer... Um, bed shakers. They offer different devices that um, are available also through the TAP program as well. So any type of telecommunications equipment that a person may need, you know, parents who maybe need a baby choir, those are some things that you can get through the uh, Virginia Relay, um, the Technology Virginia Relay program. Let's see, we'll put a picture of that. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can put a picture of what a TTY looks like so you can kind of get an idea. For those who maybe don't know um, what it looks like, I'm going to see if I can find one for you. So this is what a TTY, they call it a text telephone or a teletype telephone. This is what one looks like. Um, it has little suction cups. That you, when the phone rings, you can put the phone on top of the um of the suction cups, and then from there it'll transcribe so that the person who's using the TTY can see on the computer screen um, what it what's being said to them. They do have different varying um, variances of it now. Some of the TTYs look a little bit more modern. Um, a lot of them now, like for example, here's one right here that actually has the handset already attached to it. It looks something like that. They even have some now that can can convert from what we call a TTY to a hearing phone. And with the hearing phone, basically, it looks like a TTY, but we will put speakers on the back of the phone. And when you put the speakers on the back of the phone, the person who is typing can hear. They may Maybe they can hear, but maybe they can't speak. So they can hear the call, and then they'll just start typing based upon whatever they hear to respond back um, to the caller. So that's basically um, it. If anyone has any questions, um, any comments, doesn't understand, please let me know, and I can definitely go back over some of what we talked about. This is uh, Steve Marzoff again, and and we had a few people had trouble seeing the slides, and we will put the slides on our on our website, and when we uh, put the recording on there, we'll we'll also make sure that uh, um, you know the slides are are with it as well. Uh, so if you had trouble seeing, we can we can definitely make that available to you, um, so that you can see what a TTD look TDD looks like um, TDY uh, if you have never seen one before, and uh, every. Every uh, 91 Center in Virginia should have one, so if you haven't seen one, you can stop by and they should have one uh, that you can look at as well. Um, are there any questions? I, I think one of the important things that uh, Frizzell mentioned that is that if you do get in a 9-1 center or any for any government service, this would be for those that are participating that, that are from GIS office or an IT office or anywhere else, if you do get a call from a relay service, you know, it, they will announce themselves, and then they are in that role of of passing information back and forth. And when I ran Prince William County's 911 center, um, we did get a few calls this way, and it was unexpected. 
Um, uh, much like, like uh, Frizzell said with her first call of, wait, who, what, what's going on here? Um, so it is important that everyone understand um, that the uh, what the relay service is, and that the, either on the non-emergency line, well, would would have to be on a ten-digit line. Um, you know that there may be a call that comes in uh, for either municipal services or even emergency services. If that's what the person was comfortable calling into, then they they make. That call might come into the into the 911 center. So, um, you know, it's an important reminder because we don't get many of them um, in Prince William County. We took probably 100,000 911 calls, and maybe we'd get two or three through the relay center. Not to mention only two or three from a TDD either. But they are as critical as any other 911 call, and we need to make sure we process them, them properly and and everything else. So. Um, you know, understanding the relay service and 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 understanding um, the role that they play in in it's much like the language line. They don't translate; they just provide the information um, that whatever that's being asked, they announce themselves, and then they go into to that that relay mode. So it is it's important that people don't forget about that service being out there, um, and also it can be one that can be used if you need to contact somebody who's hearing impaired from your office, say for you know, a follow-up call or something, you can use 711 as well to, to place calls to, to members of, of uh, the community that, that might need those services. Absolutely. And um, this is for Zell. Another thing is that I know that this is kind of, um, you know, a webinar. I am more than available to come out to, you know, either the 911 center or either a, a company and kind of show you, and we can go through a couple of test calls as well so that you can feel comfortable in making and receiving a um, a TTY or a 711 relay call. So you can kind of see how it flows and kind of get the feel of what it's going to feel like. So if that's something that maybe um, you would like to have, you know, follow up with me or Melissa and um, let me know, and we can definitely arrange and schedule for that to happen. We can come out. And like I said, show it to you hands-on and then kind of help you, um, you know, make a couple of test calls to be able to receive and make those relay calls. And, and I will tell you as a former 911 center manager that, that um, calls from the hearing impaired community probably were one of the things that worried me because we take them so infrequently and we had 86 people in the in the communication center so taking only two or three or four or five a year not everybody was going to get one every year so as a result right. um it that that is something you need to practice and make sure that it's not missed because remember um if you're talking about calls directly to 911 sometimes those calls can come in as no voice contact calls that you you say hello you know 911 what's your emergency and no one answers because they're waiting for a response from a TDD, so it is a uh, skill that needs to be practiced, and we've often encouraged uh, centers to partner up and and do periodic testing between them to make sure that the uh, call takers and dispatchers can recognize the 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 bado tones of a TDD and recognize oh that's a, a hearing impaired call I need to to switch over. A lot of the equipment we use they can auto recognize it. Uh, but again, sometimes those uh, non-voice calls where it's just an open line, um, you know, you have to interrogate it and try the TDD. And and it has been um, a, a number of years since 91, 92, since the ADA um, uh, passed, and and it's it's been you know at least 20 years since uh, a, the original push came to put. Uh, TDDs into 911 centers, so we want to make sure that people don't forget about how important it is uh, that we can process calls from all the citizens. And and for your benefit, Frizzell, I will tell you that we are working on text to 911, and there are a number yeah. of, of localities. We were at 30 percent. I think we're higher now. We might be at 40 or maybe even 50 percent mm -hmm. who have deployed it. Um, but we uh, legislation just passed this year from the General Assembly that requires all 911 centers to have it by July 1st, 2020. And okay. uh, we will be pushing, uh, you know, helping the localities get there. And also as we deploy next generation 911, making sure. But, you know, we recognize the hearing impaired community for a large, a large number of percentage 
has gone to text messaging as their primary way of communicating, and you know, we need to be able to support that as well. So the resources are there, and I'm, um, you know, we, we also have contacts at the Virginia Department of Deaf and Hard of Hearing that if you're not connected with a community group in your area, um, there are a number of centers. I know uh, we worked heavily with the Fairfax Resource Center um, mm-hmm. to, to, to do test calls and outreach to the community. Um, and, and I, you know, those, those are very valuable connections and, um, contacts to make, to make sure that you're, you're meeting the needs of, of, of that community. Um, so are there any other questions or for those, is there anything that, uh, that you wanted to add? No, just to piggyback, absolutely. Um, definitely utilize the resource centers in your area. Like you said, the Fairfax Resource Center, the Northern Virginia Resource Center. Um, they partner along with Virginia Relay and the Department for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing to also provide those trainings. So definitely, um, you know, reach out and, you know, talk to them. If you have any questions, they'll be more than willing to come and answer them. And, if you know, get a chance to check out the Virginia Relay website, kind of go through it, um, check out the VDDHH website um, as well. And, you know, and, again, if you have any other questions, you're more than welcome to kind of email me or give me a call. Um, we're always here to answer any questions that you may have. Are there any other questions? If not, uh, first want to, to start off by thanking uh, Frizzell Hampton for doing uh, the presentation today. Um, you know, it's very important uh, information. I want to remind everyone that we do have one more in our N11 series with 811. Um, it, it, um, it is the uh, Virginia Utility Protection Service, or what people sometimes refer to as Miss Utility, um, and and how you know we can work together with with that group as well because I I do think you know, there was a lot of concern when these N11 numbers were initially announced by the FCC that they would cause confusion and people wouldn't know which one to call and I don't think that's bared out I think what we found is people can know when I'm called this one or calling that one and 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 that it hasn't negatively impacted 91 in fact quite the contrary I think as we learned last week with 211 um, you know, that's a great resource to refer people to when they don't need 911, but they need community help of some sort. And here's another example of a sister service in 711 where it can help uh, the, the people who need it to, to communicate both with us and, and with others as well to get not just 911 services, but other city or county services. And, and at the end of the day, we're here to serve our citizens, all of them. And, uh, you know, that's why this is such an important service. So if there aren't any final questions, we'll finish up a little early today. Um, I appreciate everyone's time. I appreciate uh, the, the work that you do in, in support of, of 911 public safety and, and your communities in general. And if there isn't any last questions, thank you all and have a great rest of the day. And we'll be back again uh, in a few weeks with uh, 811. Thank you. Thank you very much.